According to Tony Robbins, there's just six basic human needs that make us do everything that we do. So today, we're gonna talk about those six, how those six reasons play into your level of physical fitness, and then we're gonna contrast that with just six of the infinite number of excuses we use for not getting in shape. Stay tuned. So what are the six human needs according to Tony Robbins? Here they are. Certainty, uncertainty, significance, connection, growth, and contribution. Those are the six things that according to Tony Robbins, we all need and, and they drive all of our behaviors. Well, we're all gonna be impacted by these six things a little bit differently. We're all gonna have put more weight on some of these than on others. But let's just start with the first one, certainty. So my interpretation of certainty is that we all want to be sure of some things in our lives. We want to be confident that we're going to be able to get out of bed in the morning, drive ourselves to work, do our job. Um, if, we're, if we're already retired, we want to be sure that we're going to be able to get up in the morning and go do whatever activity we want to engage in that day. So when it comes to fitness, certainly plays into your fitness in with regard to the fact that if you're not in good shape you can't possibly be certain that your health isn't going to take a turn for the worse tomorrow because you're out of shape or because you're morbidly obese because you're taking six different drugs to control your high blood pressure your diabetes whatever else your high cholesterol all the things that happen as a result of being in bad shape the things that happen over the over time generally to most of us where our bodies start to revolt from not being in shape so one way to get some certainty in that area is to get yourself in shape we can never be certain that we're going to live another day but we can reduce the amount of uncertainty in the area of your health and fitness if you get yourself in shape so that's certainty and physical fitness so what about the excuses well excuse number one i don't have enough time well, first of all, how much time does it take to get in shape? Well, I just got done doing a workout that was basically 100 burpees piled in with 100 clean and jerks with a relatively lightweight, I think it was 85, 90 pounds, something like that. <clears throat> That's way more, and it took me about 32 minutes to do that. And I didn't really push myself. I could have maybe got it under 30, but it would have been close. But in any case, that was way more intense of a workout than anybody needs to do just to get in good basic physical condition. So let's just say for the sake of argument, it takes that 30 minutes is a good workout, especially as you're older, because you just, if the older you get, the you still have to work out with high intensity, but you don't want to work out for, you don't want to spend four hours in the gym or however you're getting your fitness on. <clears throat> so a 30 minute workout, if you do that even four days a week, you're gonna be able to, I, use a, I usually use a, just a basic push-pull routine, which means one day I work out half of my body, the upper half, and the next day I work out the lower half, take a day off, or do something unusual on that day, and then come back and repeat that process. So over the, over the course of five days, I've worked out four times, and then take off the weekend if you want. So that's all you really need. If you can't, I mean, you basically you sleep maybe eight hours and you work eight hours and maybe there's some commute time in there, but essentially you got this eight hour window of time that's either start, starts in the morning when you get up and ends when you go to bed with the work in between there. A half an hour isn't very hard to find. You're gonna spend a half an hour scrolling through TikTok or doing something that really doesn't contribute to your life at all. Or on the other hand, you can, throw a half an hour in there and make significant improvements in your health, your fitness, and the quality of your life. So, I don't have enough time, that's bullshit. Everybody has enough time. Now let's look at the next one, uncertainty. We all need a little variety in our lives. We all need something that uh, we're not expecting, but we don't want the things, we don't want unexpected surprises that we don't want. We just want unexpected surprises that we do want. Like. The, when it comes to fit, fitness, 
The uncertainty is, are you going to be able to lift a heavier weight the next time you go in there? Are you going to be able to win a race that you might have signed up for? Are you going to be able to compete at a level that you've never competed before? Are you going to be able to go out and, and play with your grandkids, your kids? Those things are, you, you're going to be uncertain of those things. <clears throat> The uncertainty that physical fitness provides in those areas is that, is that you're gonna, you just don't know how much better you can be. So you just, it gives you a place where you can keep trying to get better and you can never be sure what, what is your limit? What is your physical potential? So you get a little bit of uncertainty out of also trying to get yourself in shape. Another excuse that we use way too often is it's, it's just too late. I mean, I'm old enough now I missed my window. I, if I'd have started working out when you did, if I'd have started working out when I was 20 or 30, hey, I'd, no problem. But now I'm 40, 50, 60 or more, it's just too late. I just can't get in shape. Well, that's another one I gotta say, bullshit. There, there is plenty of guys, plenty of people who have completely transformed their bodies. They finally got to that point where they said, enough is enough, not gonna live like this anymore, and made the transformation. I'll put pictures up here to show you, just a few of them, but there's lots and lots of people, lots of examples. And it's kind of like uh, when uh, the guy ran the four minute mile. Before he ran that four minute mile, nobody thought you could run a four minute mile. But after he did, all of a sudden we had a whole bunch of people running four minute miles. Well, there's plenty of examples of people who've gone before you at every age who've managed to get themselves in shape. So I'm too old. Another excuse we're gonna have to say BS. It's not it's never too late. You can always make improvements. Let's talk about significance now. That's number three. How do you get significance out of getting yourself in shape? Well, significance, probably the best way to describe significance, how we feel about it, is that we all want to feel like we're the best at our job, the, we're the best father, grandfather. Uh, the best at something, maybe the best golfer, the best basketball player, whatever it is. And one of the great things about physical fitness is every time you put a deposit in your fitness bank, every time you do a workout, uh, you train yourself, you, you make improvements, small improvements that make you better. And those making yourself better is a good way to get significance. You can really find the significance if you actually you get yourself in the condition that allows you to compete in a in a race in an event in some athletic endeavor where you might not win but the fact that you got there is significant versus most of your peers especially when you get to be an older an older man over over 40 you know you're the the group of people that can compete at a any kind of level at all goes way down so you get to be significant just from getting yourself in shape especially if you compete. So that's one way to get the significance uh, need met through physical fitness. Another great excuse is, it's just too hard. Well, no shit, Sherlock, it's hard because you're out of shape. But you know what's more hard? What's more hard is spending the last 10 years of your life in bed, taking drugs, on a ventilator, unable to function at all, just waiting for death to come knock on your door. That's gonna be really hard. So this is one of those things where, yeah, it, it is hard. That's, there's truth to that. It's hard, it, it's, if you're not, if it isn't hard, you're not gonna grow, you're not gonna get better. So you gotta make it hard. And you have to choose your hard. You know, you can choose the momentary pain of doing something difficult that's gonna improve you over the out there in the distance pain of regret and, and misery that you're gonna suffer by not doing this. Even, you know, it's hard to watch your kids play and you can't join, watch your grandkids, and you can't participate because you're so, such a physical wreck. So, choose your heart on this one. It's, the, it's an excuse that we use, but it's, again, it's just BS. The next one is connection or love. So, how does physical fitness hook up with connection? Well, one, one, one great thing about, you know, if you're, if you're totally out of shape, all you can do is lay in your easy chair, drink beer, watch TV, you're probably not gonna be the most attractive human being on the planet, and 
So that's going to have some impact on your love connection with whoever else is in your life. It's also going to have an impact on your ability to stay connected with your kids, your uh, grandkids, the people around you because if you're physically impaired, it, it makes it difficult to be part of their lives and to, to get that connection other than just sitting and talking. So by getting yourself in shape, you give yourself a lot of opportunity to, to gain those connections, to, to be a, a person that people want to connect with and to be able to connect with people. So that's where physical fitness and connection kind of hook together. How about this one? My girlfriend, wife, <clears throat> brother, mother, sister, whatever, doesn't support me doing this. They won't, they won't do it with me. I, they just, I, I can't get anybody to do this with me. Fitness is a solo activity, no matter whether you're doing it with someone or by yourself. <clears throat> it, is a, it is an activity where you are, you are working to be better than the version of you that you were yesterday. Um, it's good to have support, it's good to have friends, it's good to have somebody who will go along with you, but you'll find people when you're engaged in a fitness activity that are also, that are into that, if, if it's the company that you seek while you're doing it. But at the end of the day, you're competing against yourself when you're getting yourself in shape. So don't let the fact that someone else won't help you, because nobody's going to lift the weights for you, nobody's going to do the exercise for you, you're going to do it yourself. So at the end of the day, it's you against you. Don't worry about what everybody else thinks. Anytime you try to succeed at anything in the world, there's going to be people around you who try to drag you back to their level. It's like that story about the crabs in the bucket. You know, you put a bunch of crabs in a bucket and if one of them starts to climb up out of there, the rest of them will drag him back down. <clears throat> Same thing happens with your, the people who surround you. Two suggestions are, don't worry about those people, or if you are worried about them, find different people to hang around with. So now let's talk about growth. Pretty obvious on this one. We all, one of the great satisfactions in life is overcoming obstacles and getting better at something. Kind of plays back into that significance thing. You want to be the best at whatever it is. The growth that you get from, from you, you can get growth from reading books and learning new, new things and from just participating in whatever activity, your job, at your job you can get growth by taking on a new task and learning and, and getting good at it. But you can also get growth, one of the easiest places to get growth is in a gym or in your physical fitness routine. Because every single time you put in the effort, you push yourself, you push your body beyond its current uh, comfort zone, you grow. You're going to break things down and when you when you recover, you're going to grow. You're going to get better, you're going to get stronger, you're going to get faster, you're going to have more endurance. Whatever the type of training you're doing, it's going to improve your body. Very and it takes and it's a gradual process and it's a never-ending process. You can always make improvements throughout your life. So, physical fitness is one of the places you can experience growth from the time you start till the day you die. You can continue to improve yourself physically. Or how about this excuse? I just don't know what to do. I don't know where to start. Well, this, is a, this one is just to me is just crazy. In today's modern world, we have so much information available to us. And you know, the basics of getting in shape, we all know, we all deep down inside, we all know, eat right, get enough rest, and exercise. That's it. It's a really simple three-legged stool. How much of each of those things you do, how well each of those things you do will determine how good of condition you get in, but it's really simple stuff. And look how much information is available on YouTube to show you not only, not only to give you advice about this, but to give you the actual, here's the exercise, here's how you do a squat, here's how you do, these are the things you need to do. There's tons and tons, including on our channel, what to do to get in shape. So I don't know what to do. I don't know where to start. That's a pretty sad excuse. Don't use it. <laughs> Last but not least is contribution. If you're totally out of shape, if you're back to that one I described earlier, someone who just all you have the energy to do is if you're coming home from work just to crack open a beer and sit down in your easy chair and watch TV, if that's all you've got in your tank, then you're not going to be able to contribute much to the world. You're going to just kind of get through the world. You're going to be the average or below average performer in everything that you do. On the other hand, 
if you are physically fit, if you get yourself physically fit, if you just commit to getting physically fit and start taking the actions, as you get more and more fit, you're going to be more and more capable of contributing to the lives of the people around you, to the community, to whatever it is you want to contribute to. As you, as you get in better shape, you have better mental clarity, you might start a new business, you might, you, you might change the world with a great idea rather than just living in that brain fog from the bad food and all of the things that we use to dumb us down as we go through life. So when it comes to contribution, you can contribute. We think about, well, I contribute in by giving my money. Well, even if that's the case, you look at a lot of the guys who are just extremely successful. They're also generally pretty fit. There's some exceptions to that, but in a, in a lot of cases, you're gonna find that fitness and success, monetary success, go hand in hand. But it, besides monetary success, just being physically fit allows you to do so much more physically to contribute to the world. And it, it's just a great place to improve your ability to get that contribution need met. Or how about this one? I think all the people who are lifting weights and getting in shape are just vain. They just, they just care about the way they look and I just don't care about the way I look anymore. Well, it's not about vanity. It's about, it's about what you're able to do. And even this even goes back to the contribution factor. There are plenty of activities that are uh, physical like 5K runs and stuff where your entry fee goes to support say St. Jude's Hospital or some worthy, uh, worthy charity. So there's plenty of ways that while getting fit, you can contribute to society. It's not about the vanity, it's about what you're able to do. There's nothing wrong with looking better because that's gonna help you in some other areas of your life too. And so that's a good thing. But it's not about that. The reason for getting fit is, the, the many reasons for getting fit among them are the contribution you can make to the world, the amount of time and, and quality of time you can spend with the people you love, the length of your life, the, how long you're gonna be around to spend time with the people you love and to contribute to the world, and just about your ability to have a, a good quality of life every single day. That's the main reason for getting yourself in shape. So we have all these human needs that by getting in shape, we're gonna meet, will help to meet a lot of those human needs. But then we also have this big pile of excuses of why we don't do it. And really the core reason why we don't do it, I think can be all boiled down to, it's difficult. It's, we all like to take the path of least resistance and that path doesn't have a lot of rewards to it. In fact, it has a, it has a big dark side to it. So can I'll throw away all those excuses. And oh, and one more thing. You know, you're never really gonna succeed at getting yourself in shape until you get your mind in a different place. I was talking to one of my sons this weekend. He's 40 years old. And when he was a child, he was kind of skinny and nerdy and him and his buddies played video games and did math equations and things. Very nerdy kid. He went off to college and he became a, a whole different person. He became a, a frat boy partying, eating bad stuff, and, and he ballooned up. He looked like Jabba the Hutt for a, a while in his life there. And then somewhere along the way, something changed in him, and he started the gradual process of getting in shape. And now he is in incredible shape. This boy has muscles in his crap. You know, he is just, he's in great shape. And I talked to him this weekend and asked him about that, about that journey and, and whether there were things along the way that made him change. And he said, you know, I just, I, when I look back at it, that was a different me, you know. I was I was the nerdy Bryce when I was a kid, and I was fat Bryce when I was there, and now I'm fit Bryce. And it's it's how he sees himself. It's that shift in your mind that you have to make to really get to where you're gonna do the things you need to do to get yourself in shape. So, can the excuses look at the reasons why you should get in shape, the human needs that are you're gonna meet by getting in shape, and then make that shift in your mind that you are now gonna be a fit person. You're not gonna be that same old person you are. You have changed already, even without making any conscious effort to, you've already changed from 
you, you're not the same person you were when you were 10 years old. You're not the same person you were when you were 20 years old. That person is gone. You're a new person. So you have a choice to become a new person anytime you want. So make that choice. Get yourself in shape. And uh, if you got some value out of this video, please share it and subscribe. And once again, thanks for watching.